I look at the code, and I just don't get it. I know there's logic there somewhere, but I can't see it. And it makes me feel stupid. I hate that. I hear this sort of thing a lot, and it makes me feel this way. Because working with JavaScript doesn't need to be this painful. I love JavaScript, and it's part of my job to help other people love it as well, or at least not hate it. I try to walk them down a path, starting from callback code that they know and often hate, through to promises, which they sometimes know and also often hate, and end up with async await functions, which most people often haven't heard of, um, but are a new feature that we can use in JavaScript in the browser and in Node today. This is the promise path to async await, and we're going to travel down that path right now. Looking at examples like this, it's really easy to see where some of that discomfort and confusion might come from. See, callback code imposes an additional burden on our minds by the addition of the time dimension to otherwise clear synchronous code. When I fell into JavaScript in a big way, coming from PHP and Ruby, I found this style of code really difficult to learn. And when I look at examples like this, even today, years later, I can feel waves of frustration and confusion just making me want to wiggle and twitch um, like I used to back in those days. Bit of a survey now. Hands up if you've ever written callback code. Keep your hand up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you've used promises. OK. And if you've never used async await, put your hand down. Excellent. Everyone with their hand down, look around. Keep your hands up until you can see someone with their hand up. And keep them in mind, because after this talk, they'll be answering your questions. So that callback example that we looked at just now is from production code that went in about three years ago. It's not like my favorite code. It's not the worst code I've ever written. It falls into that not bad category, which is kind of like a push scooter. It gets you where you want to go, but it takes a lot longer and a lot more effort than you might want to put in. And to illustrate quickly why this callback code imposes this additional burden on our minds, we'll just step through this function really fast. The first thing that happens, like with all code, is the function call. We say, given these arguments, call me back when you've got a valid token. And stepping into it, we can see the first thing that happens is a call to a database. So the really awesome thing about JavaScript and callback code is that we can do these sort of things that require waiting for something, like calling a database, doing a network call, reading a file, without blocking the rest of the application or the GUI or whatever it is that your users are interacting with in your app. The downside is that we have to consider that extra dimension of time in addition to the sequence of events and logic that we, that we think about in synchronous code. As a programmer, I don't want to think about this. My logic is actually blocked until I get the token. Whether or not my application is blocked is really irrelevant when I'm trying to debug something. And here we see the database is called back. We've got our token. There was no error. We proceed down, make another database call, which is more waiting, another consideration of that time dimension that we would rather not think about. And again, it's great that we can do this sort of thing without blocking, but our logic is still blocked. So our minds are blocked. Great that the app isn't. We are. We have to think about this extra thing. And here we've gone back to the database with another update, and we're free to return our value, which is what we would do if we were writing synchronous code. But at this stage in our function, that ship has sailed. We can't return anything. Instead, we have to call our callback, which was an argument to our function, with the value. And if that doesn't make any sense to anyone or you're confused, that's because it is confusing, even to me today after doing this for many years. And here, look at all those arrows, five of them. There should only be two, one for the initial function call and one for the execution of the function. But because we're using asynchronous code with callbacks, we've got a lot of that pyramid of, of doom going on. So instead of just reading the code down, we've got to also read it to this side, then back, then back to the side, then back, as we're figuring out what's happening in our function. Hopefully, this fairly trivial example has highlighted some of the issues that exist with callback code. It also showed how good it is that like we can write non-blocking stuff, but it'd be better if it wasn't this way. Continuing along the path to async, we'll take a quick stop in Dreamland and look at what JavaScript might be like if it was synchronous. Here's our get token function written in a synchronous manner. We would just assign the result of our function to a variable. 
and the code would execute synchronously, blocking, but synchronous, easy to read. And if there was a problem, we could catch it using the old try-catch paradigm. That third dimension doesn't exist in this code. We've gone back to just the sequence of events and the logic, which makes it much easier to tell what's going on, much easier to read other people's code, much easier to read our code from many months ago. This here is our goal state. That's what we're going towards, and that's what we will reach once we get to async await. But first, we have to go through promises. Promises have actually highlighted, been highlighted a lot in many of the talks, both yesterday and today. And they're really fundamental aspect of JavaScript that we have to understand in order to be able to effectively use a lot of the libraries and the language itself going on. Even all of the media stuff that we saw yesterday and today seems to all be built with a promise API as opposed to a callback one. And fetch, which will be the successor to Ajax, is written with a promise API as well instead of Ajax's callback API. So it's something that we really need to have a focus on and start learning. More so when we want to go and start using the more advanced features of modern JavaScript, like async await, because they're built on promises. Refactoring our callback example to use promises, we get something a bit like this. Some of the immediate advantages are that we no longer have to consider the time dimension as deeply. It's much easier to see the sequence of events just going vertically down the function. And we can throw things, and we can catch them. Just like the callback version, the first interesting thing that happens is the function call. In this case, we say, given these arguments, promise me a valid token when you're done. A major difference, though, between the callback and the promise example is that in the promise example, we immediately return something. We return a promise object, in this case, a list of promise objects known as a promise chain. Now, this promise object can have any one of two states. It can be settled or it can be pending. In this case, it's pending, which means it hasn't yet done its work. At this stage in our function, we can see the first promise was fulfilled, which means it was settled in a positive way, otherwise known as resolved. Often, this is the place where you're going to get your result. And although similar to the callback example, activity has occurred in the time dimension, but we weren't, considered, we weren't forced to consider it as deeply using promises. And here, we can see the second promise is fulfilled, again, successful. And we can just return our value from the trailing promise. And our fulfillment, or then handler, we get given that token. And we can just do with it whatever we would. An interesting thing to note about promises is that if anywhere within a promise throws an error, we can catch that using the rejection or catch handler at the bottom of our promise uh, consumer. So this refactoring and quick walkthrough of promises shows some significant wins over callback code. We no longer have to consider the time dimension as deeply. It's more like 2.5D as opposed to full 3D. <clears throat> we can separate error and success handling clearly in the code, and we can throw and catch things again. This often results in clearer, easier to follow code if done properly. We're getting there. This is going to be our last stop. Um, so we've gone through callbacks. We saw that although they impose that additional burden by forcing us to consider time, they let us write code that doesn't block, which is really cool. Promises patch over some of those um, complexities Im imposed by callbacks. They have their own down downsides as well. There's a lot more fluff, um, vertical distance can increase when you're writing promises, and some actions can be a bit harder. Let's have a quick look at async and see how it improves on top of promises again. This is another refactoring, last one. This time, we've gone from promises to an async function. If we put it next to the imaginary synchronous code, if I hadn't spent the last 10 minutes priming you for it, I'd be surprised if a large portion of us would even be able to tell that it's asynchronous. If we took out the async and the await words, it looks almost identical to the synchronous code, and I think this is really awesome. It means that we can just read this code as if it was synchronous, letting the engine do all of the asynchronous work behind the scenes. The main difference between the two is that with our callback code, oh, sorry, with our synchronous code, we can assign the result of our call to a variable. With async await, we're guaranteed to get, guaranteed to get a promise back which means we can leverage all the things we learn with promises when we're using async functions. We can use them inside promise change as well, 
which is quite flexible and an easy way to start using them in existing code. An async function, you call it just like any other function. Regardless of what the function itself returns, the consumer will receive a promise back. Inside an async function, though, we can use a new keyword, await. Await means that anything to the right of it is a promise, and the function's execution should be paused until that promise has settled, whether it settles in a su successful resolution or it's rejected. And we can use it to wait for promises anywhere we'd put a synchronous function call, so as a variable declaration, as an argument to another function, or in a for loop, or returning it from another function. Anything, anywhere you would normally use a synchronous function, you can put an awaited promise. This means that we, don't pro we programmers don't have to think about when things are happening as much in our code anymore. We can just use promises and async functions and let the engine handle that sort of thing. Also, you can throw a gain from inside async functions, uh, but if you forget to add a catch handler to your consumer, that error will just disappear, which is very confusing, and it's a gotcha, so keep that in mind. It's got me many times. Uh, unlike a normal function that returns a promise, you're free to return whatever you like. So a st static variable, um, a list, another function call, or a promise. If you don't return a promise, the engine will wrap it with one, so you don't have to worry about that consistency. This is how I feel after I've written code using async await, and after I've refactored callback or promise code to use it. And it's also how I feel months later or when I'm reviewing other people's code because I don't have to try to wrap my brain around when they think stuff is happening and is that correct. As long as they've used async await correctly, I can just read the code as if it was synchronous and let the engine handle all of the asynchronous actions. Looking at the callback, and the async code side by side, we can really see that although we haven't lost much vertically, we've definitely gained a lot of simplicity in the horizontal or time dimension. It's much easier to read. And instead of having to use the error as the first argument convention, if the code you're using even follows that convention, in order to pass errors back, we can just throw an error. As long as we remember to put a catch handler on our consumer, we'll get that error there. It also works inside promise chains, so you can mix promises and async functions together in chains. Very useful. And we've arrived. All of the benefits of asynchronous code and none of the, none of the negatives. And this is how I hope you feel now after you've seen how easy it is to use this in your daily work and play and home projects. For my final couple of minutes, I'm just going to show you my Dr. Zeus generator, which I put together as a way to figure out where I could and where I might not be able to put a weight inside a function. I found that you can use it as an argument. In this case, this console log won't be called until the awaited promise has settled. The value of that awaited promise will be passed to console log. So we don't have to think about this sort of thing. Normally, this would be two or three lines and an indentation. And you can use it in a loop. Um, bear in mind that this expects a, an array. I don't actually know what will happen if it returns something else, probably a fire. You can access the result as long as you wrap the await and the function call or the promise inside brackets. And you can wrap it with a try-catch block. And this works exactly the same way you would expect it to work if you were writing synchronous code. Remember that if you don't wrap anything inside your async function with a try-catch block and something throws an error, that error would disappear unless you were handling it with a rejection or a catch handler on the consumer side. And you can return anything you want from an async function. And you can use it today. Yep, you should. I think you'd like it, you really would. In Node Vision 7 or with Babel, straight to production, it's that stable. Thank you very much.